Hello everyone, welcome again. In the software testing tutorial, we are going to understand what is boundary value analysis. So in the last tutorial, we have understood about equivalence partitioning or EP in short. Now we'll understand about BVA or boundary value analysis. Equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis go hand in hand. So I'll continue with the same example that I explained in the last tutorial and I'll show you how you can apply equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis together to come up with the best test cases to get the maximum coverage for the component that you are going to test. All right. So this is the discount example that we have took in the last tutorial. So these, you know, were the four valid partition. So I'll just write valid and here it is invalid above 5001 should be not allowed to purchase right so these are the discount purchases that a particular website uh, is offering and we are say for example going to test it so in equivalence partitioning what we have done is we have partitioned the discounts uh, and the amount that need to be purchased in a particular partition right so for example up to hundred dollars from one to hundred dollars the discount percentage should be five percent 101 to 200 dollars should be 10 percent right so this is what we have done to divide the discount percentage into equivalence partitions and then we had invalid partition because anything less than point uh, less than one dollar should should not be allowed to purchase and anything above five thousand one dollar shouldn't shouldn't be you know allowed uh, the purchase shouldn't be allowed in that case so now if we talk about the boundary value analysis I'll come up with the example of the boundary. So very raw example. Say for example, you are, let me remove this as of now. I'll make it again. Say for example, you are building a house. Okay. Now when you are building a house, you have a piece of land and the piece of land will have the length and breadth. Okay. So this is length and this is breadth. All right. So usually, you know, this is say for example, your frontage and say for example, this is of 10 meters and this is of 20 meters depth. Okay. Now when you are building the house, you basically first thing you do is you see the map and you define the boundaries of your land or the piece of land that you have bought to build the house. Right. So in this case, you will say, okay, this is, you know, this is my, you know, boundary on the map, zero to 10 meters. Okay, this is what my frontage is and then you know again from here 0 to 20 meter this is my depth is and you define the boundary. Once you define the boundary of your piece of land then you start you know you, you have the boundary built and usually you then you know define uh, all the plan and you start building your house within that boundary. So boundary value analysis is no different from what this example is. We have the boundaries, so we define the boundaries and then within those boundaries, what we can do as part of, you know, defining the test cases, we define those test cases. So in case of building the house, we define the boundaries and then we build the house. Okay. We build house, we build rooms, everything within the boundary. And in terms of boundary value analysis in software, we define the boundaries and then we come up with the test cases within those boundaries. Okay. So as part of equivalence partitioning, we have already defined, you know, the partitions or plots in this case, or the piece of land that everyone is going to build. Okay. Say for example, this is the partition. I'll explain this with the same analogy. So this is say, for example, my plot, this is Manish's plot. Say this is uh, somebody else's. So say Ram's plot. This is um, Shiva's plot. Okay. And this is, say for example, Tony's plot. Right. So now I know my plot's boundary. So what I know is I know that this boundary or uh, this plot or this partition is mine. And this partition is valid from zero uh, from one to hundred. Right. So when we talk about e-commerce thing, 
we have the values that are accepted in this particular partition. So $1 is what I should be starting with and up to say for example $100 or whatever the end boundary is, I should be testing this partition with those boundary. Okay, so first thing is in boundary value analysis to analyze the partition that you have done in equivalence partition and get the boundaries. Okay, so in this case, the lower boundary will be hundred uh, $1. Okay, so we'll be starting with the lower boundary as we have understood in the plot example that if the frontage is 10 meters, so I'll start from zero to 10 meters and I'll mark that and then I'll go depth and start with that. So in this 5% discount thing, $1 is the lower boundary and then if say for example this particular software or this particular module accepts up to two decimal places and doesn't round those values say for example it accepts 100.99 and doesn't round 0 0.99 to 101 okay it doesn't do that then the highest boundary of the purchase should be 100.99 okay so 100.99 is what the highest purchase amount should be in this particular partition that should still be applicable for 5% discount because as soon as this changes to $101, right, as soon as this changes to $101, this becomes the boundary, lower boundary of 10% discount, okay. So that's how you analyze each of the equivalence partition and get the boundary values. So in this case, the lower boundary value is $101. The higher boundary value is 200.99 because we have already, you know, assumed that 0.99 is not getting rounded to $1. Okay, so this should still be applicable for 10% discount. So we are getting the lower boundary, the higher boundary. Same case as we had in the plot. Lower boundary, higher boundary for length and breadth so that we can define our plot and start building the house. So we are here, we are defining the lower boundary and higher boundary so that we can define what our boundaries are, what this particular partitions boundary are so that we can pick the values and start defining which values we are going to use in our test cases. Okay. Here in the 20% discount, the lower boundary is 201. And the higher boundary is again 500.99 in the 25 percent it is 501 the lower boundary and the higher boundary is 5000.99 okay and then 5001 as soon as it reaches 5001 purchase amount it is again invalid purchase amount and it shouldn't be allowed or customer shouldn't be allowed to purchase or make the purchase of that particular amount right so you can consider here that these are you know sort of plots that we have understood in the plot analogy and then come up with the lower and higher boundaries and then design your test case so let me move this and now here in the invalid lower invalid boundary we have this 0.99 anyways okay so now we have got these equivalence partition, which is we have understood in the previous tutorial. So we have partitioned these discount based on the values that are accepted in the partitions. And we have also got the boundary. So we have got the boundary of 0.99. Then we have got the boundary, lower boundary of 5% discount, which is $1, then 100.99, then 101, 200.99, then 201. 500.99, 501, and $5,000.99, right? And then 5,001, as soon as a person wants to purchase $5,001 amount or uh, want to spend on that particular website, it shouldn't allow that, right? So now if you see that instead of doing the random testing, when we use equivalence partition and boundary value analysis together, we have come up with very predefined test cases or the data that we use that we need to use in our test cases from each of the partitions along with the boundary values. 
right why do we need to do the boundary value analysis and testing because the software components most of the time you know because of the calculation uh, and logic they are they tend to fail more at the boundary values okay so it is very necessary that we test the value in between along with all the boundary values of the valid and invalid partitions okay so that is why now we have the partitions so we can easily come up with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 boundary values so we'll use these as our test cases okay along with some values between these valid partitions right so for example you pick one or two values from 1 to 100 so you can pick you know 10 dollars you can pick 70 dollars it will still be considered as five percent discount you pick one or two values from each of these partitions even if you pick just one should still be fine and then pick all the boundary values and that is what will be required to give you a complete coverage of this particular component right so rather than doing random pick and choose and uh, you know start doing testing from one dollar to fifty dollar to you know 150 and then 200 dollar and not knowing the partitions and boundary it's better to design your test cases do the equivalence partition do the boundary value analysis and then use these values in your test case or design your test case which will give you a lot better coverage and clarity in terms of defining the test cases and there will be very minimal chance of missing any of the boundary values or equivalence partitions okay so that is all for this particular tutorial on boundary value analysis boundary value analysis goes hand in hand with equivalence partition so you have to apply both together to get the maximum benefit and these are the two test design black box test design techniques that are must for you to understand uh, in terms of you know manual tester or person who wants to get into software testing and even in terms of understanding and explaining to any software testing interviewer okay so if you explain all these concepts with these sort of examples and understand these in detail you will be definitely be able to get into software testing job very easily so hope this was helpful and clear if you want um, you know any more detail or you have any queries please do comment in the comment section below and i'll uh, get back to you so that's all for this tutorial thank you very much for watching